Hello everyone, welcome to the chapter 9 review packet. I'll be going through these lessons in our book, if you're one of my students, 9.1 to 9.3, and also 9.5, talking about reflections, translations, rotations, and dilations in this review packet. If you're one of my students, hope you find this helpful as you prepare for the test. If you're a student from a different class or just a, a different school entirely, or even a different state or country, welcome. Hope you find, that, hope you find this helpful as well. Number one, Let's get started with what we see here, A, B, and C. The points, those three points are plotted and connected to form the triangle. We're going to reflect this first across the x-axis. Why don't I do this one in blue? So we're gonna have some different graphs on here. I'll start with A in blue. And reflecting across the x-axis, here's the x-axis, and this is the y-axis right here. So we're gonna reflect across or in that line. So this is two away from the line. It needs to be perpendicular when you reflect it, uh, but since this is already perpendicular here to here, that's going to work out right there to there. That'll be B prime right there. So right here, this connected line between those two points, that would be 90 degrees. So we know this is a reflection across the x-axis. Distance stay the same away. And this is going to be A prime right here. It's two away right here, so it stays two down here. And then C is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 away from the x-axis going up. So I have to do the same thing going down. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And then use a straight edge, connect those to form your, your final triangle. So this would be A, B, and then I'll label C in just a second, C prime. So this is A prime, B prime, C prime. <clears throat> and that's it, you're done right there. So that's part A. Part B, we're rotating 90 degrees clockwise about the origin. So if you're gonna rotate 90 degrees clockwise, it's gonna be spinning in this direction. I'll use green on this one. And so this would be spinning 90 degrees this way. It's two to the left and two up. And so that has to be the same thing here. So it literally, if you want to actually spin your paper around, it's gonna be kind of weird looking here, but if you spin your paper 90 degrees clockwise, we went two left and two, two up there, do the same thing here. Spin the, the paper actually counterclockwise to rotate the shape in a clockwise direction. So we moved two left, two up. You're gonna do the same thing here, two left and two up you're basically going to be copying this picture so that it shows up right here. It looks exactly the same as what you started with. So if I went, <clears throat> excuse me, if I went two left, two up, rotated it 90 degrees counterclockwise, the picture like I had before, rotated the picture this way, then the actual shape will be right here, B prime. So that's right here to here. You don't need to draw this, but this is a 90 degree clockwise rotation of that point right from there to there so that has rotated that point which we'll call uh, just because we use B prime already we'll call this one B double prime and do the same thing with C that's two left and seven up so if you spun your paper counterclockwise and then went two this way and seven that way you would have C rotated 90 degrees clockwise so that's two three four five, six, seven right there. That's going to be C prime. And it looks like A prime might go off the graph a little bit. That's all right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine to the left and two up. So we'd have to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine up and two, or nine up this way and then two over this way. Uh, that's gonna take A and spin it 90 degrees clockwise that direction. So then connect those with a straight line. Oops. Just trying to get rid of that. There we go. Trying to get rid of that green curved part there that I just drew. And connect those with a straight line. And we'll call this one, since it was the second one we drew, we'll call this a double prime. 
and that would be C double prime right there as well. And then part C translates triangle ABC into the fourth quadrant. This is one, two, three, and four. So translate that triangle into the fourth quadrant so that the vertex A has coordinates two, negative seven. So A has to be at two, negative seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I'll use three prime marks now. So how far did I have to move that? Well, let's see, from here to there, this was at negative nine. We saw that from a, a previous part here. This was at negative nine. So we'd have to move it nine, 10, 11 to the right. So we're moving the X and Y coordinates in this manner. X plus 11, we have to add X 11 to every X coordinate. And then how far down are we going to get to A triple prime there? We're going down two to get to the X axis and then one, two, three, four, five, six, looks like seven more. So that's a total of nine. We're moving the Y values down nine. So this is plus 11, minus nine, do the same thing with B, plus 11. And that's gonna end up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, 10, right there. So we're gonna end up with B triple prime being right there. This distance should still be the same away from A to B, should be the same as A triple prime to B triple prime. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Notice that's the same there. And then C, moving in the same way, 11 to the right and nine down. It looks like that's gonna end up being right here. So this distance should be the same as this one. So one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, right there. Good to go. This is C triple prime right there. Connect those with some straight lines and you're all set. Let's move on to number two then. Draw a quadrilateral fast so that it's congruent to quadrilateral bird. So this is where F and T is. Fast is congruent to bird. I'll go with green on this one. So that means F and T have to match up with B and D. This segment matches up with this segment. That means F to A would have to match up with B to I. So this is BI right here. And if this is going to be congruent and this already matches this, this looks like a translation to me. We're gonna be just sliding this that direction, sliding each point in the same direction in, in the same distance as well. So B goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight to the left. So this looks like our rule. We're having our X and Y values. We're gonna subtract eight from the X values and we're going to go down from there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Go down seven from there. So do that with each point. We just really need to do that with R and I. F and T are already set for us. So move one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Looks like R prime is gonna be right there. And let me just double check that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep, looks like that's good. And then I, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I prime is gonna be right there. So let's connect those. That's gonna be our, our shape that we're looking for. And since it's in translation, it should look exactly the same, just shifted down and to the left in this case. And so that and that, they look exactly the same like they should. No distances changed, no angle measures changed. We are good to go. Let's take a look at this one. Number three, draw the triangle that results when triangle ABC is rotated 180 degrees counterclockwise about the origin. So when we rotate 180 degrees and we're going counterclockwise, we always wanna go in the opposite direction if we're gonna actually turn our paper. Uh, so we had talked about that. If you're one of my students, we talked about that in class. So counterclockwise, that'd be going this direction. 
So we want to turn our paper 180 degrees clockwise and then recopy the picture that we had. So look here to start, you have one to the, the right. So if you turn it 180 degrees clockwise and do the same thing, put a point A prime right there, that's going to rotate A 180 degrees counterclockwise. So that's what we need to do to start here. And I'll use red this time. So A prime is going to be right there. You can do the same thing with B prime. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven to the right. If you spin it around and then go the same in the same way, go, oops, there we go. You would be going seven to the right going in that direction. So we'd have a point that would end up right, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, sevens right here. We have a, a B prime point right there. And then C prime, we're going, it looks like one, two, three, four, five up, one, two, three, four, five to the, the right. So if you spin your paper around and copy that over, it would end up being five to the left and five down this way. So your C prime would be like that. So turn your paper 180 degrees if that's helpful for you. And then do the five right, five up again. Five right and five up would end up being right there if you turn your paper that 180 degrees. Connect those with straight lines and you are done. And since it's a rotation, it's an isometry, it should look the same as what you have here. Just spun around the origin since that's our point of rotation. And so that looks like the same size, same shape. Looks like we're good to go. Number four, translate this figure so that point A prime is at zero two. So if we have A here to start, A prime needs to be zero and then up two. So how far of a translation is that? This looks, looks like we subtract three from the X value and subtract two from the Y value. So we're going X, Y and then X minus three, Y minus two. So do that with each point. If we call that A, I'm going to call this B and C. This is A prime then. Three left, two down. There's your B prime. Three left, two down. There's your C prime. Connect those with some straight lines and you're good to go. So right there, that's the translation of the initial triangle moved three to the left and two down so that this was true. Number five, plot those points to start. So I'm gonna do this one in black to start here. Two, two, <clears throat> five, two, and four, five, four, and five. So we got kind of a small triangle there if we connect those points. It looks like we're reflecting this triangle. We're calling this A B and C. So I'm going to connect those with some straight lines. Some straight segments, I suppose. Segments are straight by definition, aren't they? So I could just say segments. Uh, so some segments there connecting those points. Now we have triangle ABC. We're going to reflect ABC across the Y axis first. I'll go with red for, for this. And draw A prime, B prime, C prime. So if I reflect in the y-axis, that's right here. That's two away, so it's going to be two away on this side. That's a prime. B is one, two, three, four, five away, so five away on this side. There's your B prime. And C is four away, so going four away on this side. Connect those with some segments. You are all set. <clears throat> so notice this one and this one they're just flipped over it's like it's whoop, flipped over the the y-axis right there number five part B rotate 90 degrees around the origin clockwise so to rotate around the origin clockwise we're trying to rotate these points going this direction clockwise like that take this initially you can turn your paper 90 degrees counterclockwise and then redraw the picture just like you see it. So two right 
and two up. If you rotate your paper 90 degrees counterclockwise, two right would be this and this would be that point right there. And then here, five right and two up ends up going down here, five right and two up looks like that if you rotate your paper 90 degrees counterclockwise. And then likewise with C, that's four and five. So you'd be going four this way, five this way. So this would be your A prime, A double prime, excuse me. This would be your B double prime and your C double prime. So each point here got rotated that way. B is getting rotated 90 degrees that way. C is getting rotated 90 degrees that way as well. And let's just connect those with some segments and we're good to go with that one. And then finally, I'll do this one in blue, but to translate in this way. So negative two, that's two down. Negative four, I meant to say, sorry here, that's two to the left and then four down right here. So two to the left, take each point here, go two left, four down. There's your A, I'll call this A triple prime. B triple prime, two left, four down, it's gonna be right there. C triple prime, two left, four down, it's gonna be right there. And connect those with segments once again, good to go. So that's just the translation, the slide of that figure, two left, four down for each point. Let's take a look at number six. Graph the figure and its image. That really shouldn't be there. So grammatically, its image under the given reflection. So quadrilateral A, B, C, D with these vertices, negative three, three. That's A. B is one, four. Oops, that's one, three right there. One, four, there we go. C is at four, zero. So four and then zero up or down. D is at negative three, negative three. And we're reflecting this in this line, in this y equals x line. So if you want to think about what that means, what is that actually referring to? Y equals x is the line that goes through one, one, two, two, three, three, where the y value equals the x value. So it's not always corner to corner, but in this case it is, since this is actually, looks like seven, seven. So that works. And then notice how it goes along all the points there, right through the intersection of those points. So one, one, two, two, three, three, and so on. So this would work, oops. We're reflecting each point across this line. So to actually do that by hand is rather tedious because you'd have to get a protractor out, make sure everything's lined up with 90 degrees. But the rule was for this, if you have a point B, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm already telling you the rule. So if you have the point AB and you reflect it across the, the Y, the line Y equals X, you just switch the coordinates around. That was BA. And so if we do that here, we don't really need this blue line. So I'll just move that there. Uh, and then I will reflect all the points. I'll just do this. So A is at negative three, positive three. So the reflection of it across that line that we had drawn there is going to be, I'll, I'll leave that there for now. You don't have to have that on yours, but I think it's helpful to see. It's gonna be these two just flipped around. So three, negative three is a point on the reflection, the image of this particular pre-image. So I forgot to, or I want to draw the quadrilaterals still. Let me do that a second. This is the pre-image, this is what we have to start. Pre is before. So here's my pre-image and then the image will be after that. So I've got A prime, that's this reflected across the line. C is at four, zero. So C prime is gonna be that flipped around, zero, four. So one, two, three, four. Right there is a point on the graph. One, four. All right, that's gonna be four, one. So four, one for B prime. 
and d prime is already on the line so d or d is already on the line so d prime is also going to be right there and then connect those with some segments and you are good to go so that's the reflection of the image the black quadrilateral reflected across the line y equals x there just change flip-flop the x and y coordinates next up number seven given negative four negative six if you start with that under which of these is that a reflection that looks like that so I think it's helpful if we draw a grid on this one so there's my grid I'm gonna make some some axes here and we'll talk about our rules as we go through this um, but if you're a visual learner if this is better for you I'll have both the ways here so just pretend this is a a quickly drawn rather quickly drawn x and y axis here uh, and then negative four negative six would be one two three four one two three four five six would be this point right here so this is c at negative four excuse me that's a negative six so go down six there there we go that's not what i wanted there so this is c at negative four negative six and then it looks like you're negating you're doing the opposite of both of those things so which rule did the opposite not flip-flopped them but did the opposite of both those things the rule for reflecting across this line we just talked about that was if you have some coordinates a and b to start it goes to b a for that reflecting across the x-axis changes not the x value but the y value it negates or makes it the opposite for the y value so this one was a b changes to x value stays the same y value is opposite and then likewise for the reflecting across the y axis the x value is what becomes the opposite so that's negative a positive b the origin is where we connect it to the the origin and then do the same thing keep going in that same direction same distance right there reflected across origin right there is the new point that's where we switch both values so that's the one we're looking for this is a b goes to negative a negative b so if we start with a negative value to begin with we're gonna do the opposite of those two things so 4 and 6 this would be c prime at 4 6 it looks like that is choice C right there so reflected in the origin would be what that particular thing is uh, number 8 through 10 it's gonna be using the, the same sort of idea same directions for each one so if you have an isosceles triangle I, think I have a nice triangle tool I can use here to draw an isosceles triangle so if we take that and we we try to spin this around so let me make a a copy of this Oops. so if I begin to rotate this is there a time where it looks exactly the same as what you had to start before going all the way around so I haven't seen it look exactly the same yet still rotating still rotating and I have to go all the way around for it to look like what it did to start so this one there is no rotational symmetry to it uh, we just have an order of one. You have to go all the way around. You have to go around one time, one entire time to get back to something that looks like what you started with. So this one has an order of one. And the magnitude, if you go all the way around, is 360 degrees. So we say order one, magnitude 360 for that one. If you do a regular hexagon, I'll do that one before I talk about that one. Regular hexagon, I'll try to draw something that looks like a regular hexagon here I would say that's pretty close right there alright and I'll make a a copy of that so if you spin this around how long does it take or what what part of a turn does it take to look exactly like that so take take that and if you spin it one sixth of the way around 
it looks exactly like it did to start and you keep doing that two three four five and six times around I think I lost count there so this was let's say it looked like that to start we spin it around <laughs> that's all right I, I hope you get the point here but let me try to do this one more time so one two three four five and then six gets you all the ba way back around to what you started at so six times the order is six right there and then the magnitude is always 360 all the way around divided by the order so 360 divided by six that is 60 degrees right there I'm not gonna try to draw a regular 30 gun uh, but if you have a regular 30 gun a hexagon is six sides regular 30 gun has 30 sides it's always gonna match up with the number of sides it has if it's a regular polygon so this one the order would be 30 you could rotate it 30 different times before you get all the way back around and each one of those 30 times it would look exactly like it did when you started 360 over 30 is the magnitude and that's going to be it looks like 12 for that we can cross out the zeros 36 divided by 3 is 12 let's move on then to number 11 12 13 14 same directions for all of these we're gonna find the measure of the dilation image m prime n prime or the pre image mn using the given scale factor so our equation for this one was that the if you use m and n instead of a and b it looks like this so the image is the is equal to the absolute value times the pre-image distance so this is going to give us the scale factor what I'm actually meaning to say there is we already know the scale factor in all of these so if we take the scale factor plug it in and then plug in the value that we know into the equation we can solve for the missing value whether that be m prime n prime or m n instead so on this one we know MN we're gonna plug that in right here we know what R is we're gonna plug that in right here and we're gonna solve for M prime N prime so this one looks like this you've got R is 4 so the absolute value 4 times 3 in this case absolute value of 4 is 4 times 3 M prime N prime is going to be 12 so the distance between m prime to n prime is 12 if you were to draw a picture of that I'll just draw a rough sketch that's saying that since you have a scale factor of 4 if you started with mn looking like that being 4 this is or is 3 excuse me this would be 3 the scale factor is 4 m prime n prime is four times bigger since that's the scale factor so m prime n prime would that's not to to scale perfectly but the idea is there this is going to be three times four to get you 12. you don't have to draw this this is just to hopefully help you understand the concept better so from there let's look at this one i won't draw the pictures for the rest of these so i'll just use the the formula here so m prime n prime absolute value of R times MN on this one we know this part now and we don't know MN so we're gonna solve for MN 21 it's gonna equal 7 times MN so on this one this is gonna be 7 the absolute value of that so if you divide both parts by 7 really you could just do that right away you know MN being a scale factor of 7 here MN would have to be bigger by a factor of 7 than what MN is. M prime, M prime would have to be bigger, bigger is what I am meaning to say there, by a factor of 7. So this MN is going to be 3 in this case. That's our answer right there. So M prime, N prime, 12, MN is 3. Here we know what we're starting with is 15, and then the scale factor is 2 thirds. So it's going to get smaller. We're going to have something that's smaller for M prime. N prime so M prime N prime equals 
two thirds times that value right there, times mn. And you, if you simplify this, you can make that a fraction, put it over one. You could cross cancel and make that a one and a five. That means n m prime n prime. It's a mouthful to say, but is 10 over one, which is just 10. That's two thirds of 15. So that works out right there. And then if this is 20, the scale factor is one half. This is the image. The pre-image would have to be bigger by a factor of two. So we're saying 20 on this one, if you use the equation, is absolute value of one half times mn. To get rid of that, to get rid of that one half, you can multiply both sides by two. And that gives you what you would have started with, the image, pre-image, excuse me, mn would be 40. So on this one, your answer is 40. Let's look at number 15 now together. Graph the image of the polygon given the vertices after a dilation centered at the origin with a scale factor of 3, then graph a dilation centered at the origin with a scale factor of one half. So let's draw these to start. These are our initial points. So negative one, negative one. That's down here. That's x. Y is zero, two. So there's your y. And z is at two, one. Two, one is your z value. Connect those. And then from there, we're going to do two different dilations on this same graph. So one is going to have a scale factor of three, the other one one half. So the one with a scale factor of three, I'll change it up here. I'll use purple for this one. Uh, scale factor of three will be in purple. Everything needs to be three times as far away from the origin to start here. So here's this is zero to two, so that's a distance of two. So for y prime, I need to do 0 to 6, that times 3, so 4, 6, y prime. This is going to make things 3 times bigger. There's y prime. And then here I'm going 2 to the right, 1 up. Multiply both of those by 3. 2 times 3 is 6 to the right. And then 3 times 1 is going to be 3 up. So this is 3 times farther away to the right and 3 times higher up going that way. So we have z prime right there. And my x prime, this is 1 this way, 1 this way, so I need to go that times 3. 3 this way to the left and 3 down. And this is going to be, looks like x prime. Connect those with some segments and you're good to go. And then for the other one, I'll use, I'll use green for that. Scale factor of one half, everything needs to be, in other words, divided by two. If you're gonna multiply by one half, that's the same as dividing by two. So this moves in, this is two away, so now it's gonna be one away. This is gonna be your y double prime. Z is two to the right and one up, so it's gonna be one to the right and not one half up on this case, or in this case. That's Z double prime right there, and then X, is one one so it's going to be half of that one half and one half that's your x double prime right there connect those with segments in your sets moving on to number 16 then so describe the transformation in each given scale factor as an enlargement congruence or reduction so if it's a positive scale, or I should say if it's greater than one, if the absolute value is greater than one, that's what determines if it's going to be an enlargement. So an enlargement, you have the R value, absolute value of it is greater than one. Congruence, that's where R equals one. Reduction is when the absolute value of R is between zero and one. Uh, so what we're looking for here, r equals 16, is that going to be the absolute value of that greater than one? Yes. We're going to get, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> we're going to be getting bigger. There we go. 
getting bigger if we have a scale factor of 16. So this one is an enlargement. If it's 2, absolute value of that still bigger than 1, so it's another enlargement. One third, though, absolute value of that would be between 0 and 1. That's a reduction. And if r equals 1, that's what a congruence transformation would be, or congruence dilation. Uh, so given these scale factors, that's what you got. 19, given that this is true, under which is that going to be the reflection? So let's go back to the rules that we wrote down way back here. So which ones of these apply? It looks like on this one, if you had three, I'll just draw a really rough graph here to start. That's really rough. Draw a little better than that. So three, negative seven. Be going three this way, down seven this way. And the other, the other one is three, positive seven. So it looks like if I said one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, three, negative seven would be down here, three, positive seven would be up here. This is flipping over the x axis right there. The rule applies here where you switch the y values, you make those opposite, that's the one where you have a reflection in the x-axis. For number 20, D, E, F, G is a trapezoid with these particular coordinates and we're going to find G under the translation like this. So we could draw all this but we don't really need to. If we know that we're adding 10 to the x value subtracting 11 from the y value just do that with those coordinates. So take negative 3 plus 10 that's going to be 7. That's your x coordinate and then take negative 11 I'm sorry that's what we're doing so we'll take 4 minus 11 that's going to be negative 7 so this is your your x value right there this is your y value right there that's choice D right there number 21 what are the coordinates of the image of this reflected in that line y equals x that one was where we flip flop the value so AB becomes BA. This, we flip flop the values. It becomes 5, negative 2. So this one, choice C for that one. Number 22, if Sue scans a 4 inch picture into her computer and she stretches the picture's length to 10 inches, what's the scale factor she used? So let's draw a picture of this one. I'll use a, a rectangle here. So if you had, that's a square, a rectangle, there we go. So if you had this 4 inch picture in your computer. I guess this actually is a, a square though, so we'll assume that that's true right there because it doesn't say the side lengths are different. So let's assume it's a 4x4. Four four. But if she takes that and stretches it out so that the picture looks like now this instead, a 10x10, ten ten, not perfectly to scale here, but it gets stretched out like that. Now this is 10 instead. What's the scale factor? Well, it's getting bigger. It's going from there to there find the scale factor, take the pre-image on the bottom and the image on the top. Take those numbers and divide it like that. So image value divided by pre-image value is going to be, it looks like that can be reduced to, to five halves or if it was a decimal you could say 2.5. This is the one though that shows up right there, choice B for number 22. Number 23, determine the number of lines of symmetry for the figure and does it have point symmetry? Also, does it have rotational symmetry? So the, the lines of symmetry, let's start with that. I'll go with orange here. It looks like I could draw a line right there. Looks like I could draw a line right there. It would be reflected one over the other. Also could draw a couple more lines in here. Looks like I could draw a line right there and finally it looks like I could draw a line in right there so those are the four lines of reflection in this one for point symmetry I'll use a different color I'll go with green so if it's gonna have point symmetry it's gotta be where these lines of reflection intersect you pick any point on this figure connect it to that that point in the middle 
and you should get the same thing. If you continue in that same direction and go the same distance, if this distance is the same as that one, that needs to be a point on the figure over there. It works there, it works here, it works with any particular point you pick. That's the same distance there and there. Doesn't matter which point you pick on the, the picture. If I pick that point there, for instance, that's going to to show up, <coughs> excuse me, right over, right over there, and so on. So all these are the same. This one does have point symmetry. So this one, yes, it does. Does it have rotational symmetry? It looks like if you made a copy of that picture, well, I'm going to be copying the whole problem here, but that's all right and you spun that picture around it would look the same right there a quarter turn half turn three quarters of a turn and then all the way back around so does it have rotational symmetry sure does the order would be four the magnitude would be 360 divided by, by four which is 90 uh, we don't need to answer those questions though we could just have to say yes it does on this one number 24 let's graph this rectangle E is at negative 4 negative 2 F is at 0 negative 2 G is at 0 negative 4 and H is at negative 4 negative 4 so it looks like we have a rectangle like we were told right here that it would be and we're going to graph that and its reflection in the y-axis. So here's your x, here's your y. Let's connect the pre-image with some segments. And then if you reflect that in the y-axis, so reflect it across this line right here, f of prime and g prime will still be right there. And I'll go green on this one. So here's F prime, here's G prime, same spots right there and right there. E prime is going to be 4 away from the y-axis in the other direction. Likewise, what is that? Is that an H? I guess so. Let's see. Let me redraw that. That's better. So H prime is going to end up being right there. Connecting those with the segment gives you your your image or with segments. There is your image. Let me make that a little better. Put it right on the line actually. Alright, so this rectangle, this rectangle are congruent to each other. One's just the reflection or the flip of the other across or in the line right here in the y-axis. Let's graph now the trapezoid that we see here. 0, negative 3. It's that point right there. 1, 3 is right here. So this is D. This is E. F at 3, 3. And G is at 4, negative 3. And then connecting those says it's a trapezoid and in fact it is after you connect those you can see that the top segment EF would be parallel to the bottom segment DG. So we're going to take that and the reflection in the origin. So the reflection in the origin, I think the easiest way to think about that is rather than try to connect it and make the same line going this way just go okay this is four to the right and three down so this is at take these values and just make them both the opposite of what you have to start so that's going to be negative four positive three this one's going to be negative three negative three the opposites this one's going to be negative one negative three and then this one will be zero and positive three so that's going to be d prime E prime, F prime, and G prime respectively right there. So 0, 3 is right here. That's your D prime. Negative 1, negative 3 is your E prime. 
negative 3 negative 3 is f prime and g is going to be g prime is going to be negative 4 positive 3 so that's right here so each one of these you connect it to the origin you go the same distance same direction in the other way you've got your new point f connect to the origin it's reflected across the origin g to g prime d to d prime so that looks good looks like we just need to connect those with some segments so right there right there right there and right there all good to go number 26 let's graph the triangle xyz x coordinate is negative 2 2 y is negative 2 6 z is 2 4 connecting those looks like this is what we'll have for that triangle This was X, this was Y, this was Z. Rotation 90 degrees counterclockwise. Spin your paper clockwise to do that, to rotate the picture 90 degrees counterclockwise. So we're going to be rotating this point down to here, rotating this point down to here, rotating this point down over to, to here. So rotating each point there. So again, just as a reminder one more time here, to do this counterclockwise rotation, turn your paper clockwise to do that. So clockwise, 90 degrees this way. It should look like, like that right there. So you're going to have the, the picture that we had to start. It's going to be ended up copied right there to, to end. So I'm taking that. This is looking like this then. So we have 2, 2 this way. That was going to be two to the left and two down going that way once you copy it over. This was two and six. So this is two and six going going that way. Sorry, six this way, two that way. And then finally for Z prime, you're going two to the right and four up. So when you read are turning your paper to the right would be going this way four up would be going that way instead you'd have your point z prime right there connecting those gives you your rotated figure and really y prime i wouldn't want that to be going through the segment there uh, so you could just fix that on on yours but y prime write it off to the side instead of right through there uh, we got just a couple more here it looks like let's graph the triangle ABC with those coordinates so negative 2 1 it's gonna be right there I'm gonna do this one in black to start negative 2 1 is your a point B is at 0 6 1 2 3 4 5 6 and C at 2 1 this looks like an isosceles triangle to me. Connecting those. The triangle looks like, oops, there we go. Looks like that. Rotation 180 degrees. So when you rotate your, your paper, since it's a rotation of 180, it doesn't matter. It's going to be the same if you rotate it clockwise or counterclockwise. Uh, so spin your paper 180 degrees. And if you do that, it ends up looking like, let's see, we had like that. So your, your picture in the end on the, the bottom will look like that. So we just need to recreate that here. Uh, my paper, I don't really have a piece of paper here, so it's a little harder to, to spin it. But this one, we're going two to the left, one up. If you spin your paper 180 degrees, two to the left and one up would be right here instead. So that point is going to be a prime. For C, if you go two to the right and one up, two to the right and one up, once you spin your paper 180 degrees, ends up being here and here instead. So this is C prime. That's 
point C spun around 180 degrees, and this one was point A spun around 180 degrees. B, same thing. This is going up one, two, three, four, five, six, and we're going to be going spinning the paper going this way six would be going up six after you spin it. One, two, three, four, five, six. You've got a point right there at B prime. And connecting those looks exactly the same as what you started with, just rotated 180 degrees around right there. And then number 28, a translation to finish up. So I think personally think that's the easiest one to do to finish here. Uh, translation for two. That's L for negative one. That's M zero negative one is N and P is one four right there. So there's P and connect those So a translation is just a slide. We're going to take that picture and just slide it in this way. So to the left four and down three. Subtract four from the x values, subtract three from the y values. Your translation then will look like this. So subtract four and go down three. There's n prime. For m, subtract four, go down three. Here's m prime. For L, subtract 4, down 3, ends up being in the same spot that N is. So this is L prime right there. And then D, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3. This would be your D prime. And again, my L prime really shouldn't be going through the, the segment there, getting run over by the segment. So you could move that on, on yours but hopefully you you can still see that on mine here. So L prime is here, D prime, N prime, M prime. And I, I believe that is it. Yep, that's the, the last question we have there. As you see fit, go back, pause, rewind, review. Hopefully you find it helpful. If you did, feel free to leave a comment. Feel free to, to like the video. I appreciate those comments and likes. Um, if you have any questions, let me know if you're one of my students in class or comment right here on the video. If you're another student from another school, uh, hopefully you found it helpful as well, but feel free to ask questions you might have. Hope you have a great day, and I will catch you guys later.